Naomi Klein and Avi Lewis are in the control room. They're coming in shortly to talk about uh, this book, the, the, Naomi's book, This Changes Everything, now turned into a, a documentary by, by Avi Lewis. They, the, this Changes Everything contends that capitalism is to blame for climate change. What, what, what are your thoughts on that in just a few seconds? <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's all order, but I'll I know take, you can do uh, it. I'll take C, all the above. No, uh, so c- capitalism, you know, like, you know, I think it's, you know, I live a life of reciprocity, generosity, honesty, the best word, empathy. I think capitalism is a necessary uh, part of life to have sustainable business. You know, what you can't do is have substitution or uh, subsidies that will make a business unprofitable because at some point in time it's going to stop. Mm-hmm. And I'm a big believer in charity, but a charity that takes it to sustainability. And capitalism, as far as climate change, you know, I think that everybody, what's, what's that word I'm trying to look for? It's a powerful process where um, it's a beneficial change that you can use capitalism where down the food chain, whether it be changing the way, you know. All right. It, I'm going to have to talk to those guys about this when they come back. Thank you, yeah. Michael Wackerly from Dragon's Den, Naomi Klein and Avi Lewis coming up when Q returns. That last question. <laughs> no, that was hard. That was really hard. <laughs> Hi, guys. Hi. Hi Welcome. There. Thanks for being here. Um, and I've got to say, because I felt terribly about sort of asking Michael <laughs> Weckerly one of the hardest questions of our time uh, with about 19 seconds left or something. Go. So he's kindly stuck around and, you know. Take another 25. On my le- in the left <laughs> corner of the ring, we've got the capitalist, Michael Weckerly. Sorry, the left corner is taken. And, oh, <laughs> sorry, on my left, I meant. You're right. And in the other left corner, um, uh, the anti-capitalist. So... Do you want to try and answer that question? Just well, I'll you've had a little to, more time I, to think about yeah, it. Yeah, I did. I just thought about it here, and I think that you know, commercial business. You know, I make a living out of buying fear and selling greed, and that's human nature. You know, fear and greed, and it's those con- conduct of of humanity that creates either positive movements in 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 commerce or negative movements in commerce. And I think regulation can only go so far, but you have to attack the profitability of the companies, whether it be pig iron companies in China that, you know, emit massive amounts of pollution. And that carbon credit has to be a bit more aggressive. So make it more beneficial and make it towards a profitability standpoint where you will have a pay forward uh, entitlement, which is longer term, a better environmental solution, a better human solution. And where you have that ability to pay forward with social consciousness and environmental consciousness, the benefit of that is now going to come over longer terms, whether it be tax incentives, but it has to be sustainable in the first place. And you have to create a business environment where it has the ability to flourish. Because if you don't have flourish, then you're going to have people cheat. And hence, you know, the capitalism becomes a negative and hence you have a lot of negativity. You know, it's, it is refreshing to hear business people talk about the truth of, of, of what the market logic is composed of, fear and greed. And I think that, that the approach that we need for a collective human crisis like climate change is to, to, to understand that we're more than that is that people are not just fear or greed. Markets understand fear and greed and the stampede from one to the other and the big players make money whichever way it moves. But to confront a collective crisis that we've created through our development and burning of fossil fuels over centuries, we need to be more than fear and greed. And the market doesn't offer those solutions. People do. And you describe that as human nature, but I mean, it, it really, there's so much more to human have, nature. Yeah, we, and we, ha- I mean, we're not talking about a perfect capitalist system. We're talking about one that is already heavily distorted, right? And we, we have huge subsidies for fossil fuel uh, uh, companies. And as the price of, of uh, oil plummets, governments step in and prop them up even more, right? Um, so, you know, we th- there's this sort of theoretical discussion you can have about this textbook idea of what capitalism should be. And then there's just... The system we actually have, which is, you know, what our film is about and what my book is about. It's not, you know, this is not an economics textbook. This is real world capitalism as we have it with all the distortions and subsidies and the fact that we have a system that allows us to use the Earth's atmosphere as an open sewer um, and doesn't account for the huge costs that that creates. So, um, you know, we and think we, we, we can't leave this to the market. We haven't grappled with the basic problem with the logic of our economy, which is that you can't have infinite growth on a finite planet. And I think huge numbers of people around the world actually understand that. Let me just quickly, because I know you've got to well, go, Michael. Yeah, you have well, shared a lot of your time. I, I, with I, just, go I agree with what you're that? saying about growth. <laughs> the idea the, of, a, the, of, a, of an expanding economy on a finite planet. Just quickly, what are, how do you reconcile uh, that? You know, how does capitalism what is, what is reconcile What is new and what is old? 
you know, where you can't regress back. You know, you talk about technology, how far technology has taken us in hybrid vehicles or all different types of energy that replace fossil fuels. However, you also have, have the negative side of that because with the transformers comes all the mining and copper and everything that creates energy to take that out. And again, depleting the earth of wherever the top layer that it has on that side. But, you know, going back to a point in time where it's horse and buggy is not going to happen either. So, you know, everybody, you know, the life expectancy today is a lot longer than it was 100 years ago. And, you know, whereas we've come huge strides in creating a some energy efficiencies, you know, it's really the coordination of, you know, how do you stem the first and foremost problem, which is going to be, you know, how do you feed the world? And once you solve that problem, I think then the whole climate issue becomes a little more interesting because you can create an you environment know, you, where it's you, you positive. You stumbled forward. right into our you thesis, know, you guys, which is that we, dealing with inequality and dealing with climate change are the same struggle. Something well, tells me you two, could, you guys, could, we could all continue this conversation uh, Just before we go, day, have you done any film funding? Because <laughs> yeah. we've got this little project. He there. does like we'll to support we'll, the arts. So, there you go. You we'll, know, talk, we'll talk later. Exchange well, cards we've in got the a control. New Dragon's Den picture. <laughs> they, that's right. Off-site. You won't find me in there. I don't. Think. <laughs> you know what? That's what I, that's what I beg to differ. I think that I'll wear the no, mankini, you, Listen, Michael Weckerly, I thank you so much for but being Dragon's here. Dragon's Den you, should have the ability, to, and whether it be expanded, the amount that they can invest. But there's a lot of people that have a lot of wealth in this country that. You know, could put it to some great uses. And philanthropy, rather than putting up signs of their name, is more important to put it into the future of our children. Excellent. Well said. Or we'll just take it away from them. Michael, we'll, we'll, we'll talk in the green <laughs> room. The government does a good job of that. <laughs> Michael Wackerly, very kindly extending his time with us today. Thank you.